No, I mean, Happy New Year. Um, you know, in college basketball season, <clears throat> it's all encompassing. I think it covers uh, every holiday imaginable. You know, you think of Fourth of July. Uh, a lot of people would say, well, that's not part of the college basketball season. You know, that's the peak of recruiting. You know, you, you would go through them all. Uh, so I think for us, uh, moving to through the Christmas break, moving here through uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, uh, and, um, you know, as a team, our guys have done a really good job of uh, doing both, and whether it be school near the end of the semester, but um, we're always, it always seems like you're busy over, over this time of year. And uh, how do you think about your team at this point in the season? What have you learned from them? Um, well, I think a couple of things, you know, um, number one, uh, you know, big concern is just our overall ability to rebound, especially against big physical athletic teams. And, um, you know, that doesn't mean us, you know, necessarily killing them on the glass second shots. It's, it's, can we hold serve? Our guards have to do a great job of uh, blocking out and rebounding. You know, really everybody that, that plays in the game has to do a great job. And uh, we got to do it as a team, do the very best we can in battle. Uh, but I think that is a concern. That's hurt us in moments of our tough losses at Alabama down the stretch. Big reason we weren't able to pull through with a road win. Obviously, Baylor speaks for itself. And then even uh, in Maui. Um, the numbers don't reflect it quite as much, but a lot like that situation at Alabama when we really needed to get a defensive stop and they would miss a shot, uh, our ability to get the ball, to rebound it, to get that big defensive rebound, uh, that's, uh, that's something that through 13 games and three or four months being together, you know, um, that's a concern. And, you know, you could fix it to some degree by emphasizing it, but for the most part, you know, how we do in that area of the game will be a big indicator on uh, whether we're able to win or not. Do you want to see everybody step up at that area? Is there one guy specifically that kind of needs to pick it up? Or? Everybody, uh, but, you know, and every single player can do a better job. I think Chase is our leading rebounder right now. He averages seven rebounds a game, which is good, but on this team, you know, uh, could we get eight out of him? Uh, Absolutely, that would be big. Um, Ryan Luther and E-Man, they're not your traditional power forwards, especially who we've had here over the last six or seven years, but can they do a better job, get more defensive rebounds? Yes, and I think the way to chart it is per minute played. If you look at our guys per minute played, how many defensive rebounds are they averaging? Because on the offensive end, we don't ask everybody to go to the offensive glass. So. If Justin Coleman has zero offensive rebounds the entire year, that's fine. But can we get him to defensive rebound more? And you look at the margin, it's 35 and a half to 34.8. Uh, that margin has never been tighter since I've been, we've been here at Arizona as a coaching staff, maybe, maybe that first year. So uh, I'd say that's at the top of the list. And again, when you get to mid-March or late March and you check and just look at that stat, who rebounded more, the other team, or Arizona? Did we improve in that area? Uh, were we able to hang in there? Uh, that will be a big, big reason that we either did it or didn't in terms of having a successful season. I think the other thing about our team is uh, turnovers. One way you can make up for rebounding is to be a team that can play long stretches without turning the ball over. Um, as you guys know, through the months of November and December, we had some great moments, whether it be on the road, uh, whether it be uh, against pressure teams. Uh, we played halves with single digit, five turnovers, four turnovers. I think we had maybe a, a game, several games where we had single digit turnovers, which is a good sign. So, you know, the more shots that we can get, uh, play with 10 or fewer, I think that's a really big number for us. And I think that if we can be a team that really does a great job of taking care of the ball, that can make up for maybe some of our team's weaknesses. So again, we can emphasize it, teach, coach, do the best we can, but uh, it remains to be seen on, on how that will all eventually play out. But uh, those are two really, really big 
big numbers and I think things that we're aware of and working hard on to to improve and establish. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, how we do here this weekend in, in those two areas, rebounding and how many turnovers did we have in both games. And I think 10 or fewer turnovers uh, is a big, big deal for us. This might be the biggest break you've ever had between your pre-Christmas game and the start of the league. How have you used all that time? I mean, and I think four days, you gave the guys four days off, right? And then mm -hmm. how have you used it uh, in practice since then? Well, we you know, always uh, give our guys really close to four days off at Christmas. Um, maybe the only time we haven't is when we've played in the Diamond Head um, a few years back. But once they're, they return here, um, you know, it's not like we, we practice longer or three or four times a day. We, we just try to do the best job we can and have a good day. So since they've returned, we've had the opportunity to practice and uh, certainly work on uh, on what we need to work on to be a good team. Did, they, uh, did you have them, did you guys practice already today? Did you give them time? I don't know if they were out late or, you know, are you going to go late today because of the holiday or does that, does that change your routine? We haven't though? practiced yet. Have you had um, uh, Stone in practice already or what's, what's uh, Stone got cleared. Uh, for today, so although he's physically been here in Tucson, um, you know he had to go through all the uh, tests and uh, get cleared medically and cleared uh, to be able to participate. So today actually will be his first full day where he's able to be out there. And you know it's going to take some time. I can't just he hasn't practiced in a semester and he's learning our system. So. There are certain things he'll be able to do and other things that he won't be able to do. But we're excited about having him here. I, I think it's a big shot in the arm to add a quality player, especially a frontline player who can help us every day. And he's able to travel, um, which helps us on the road, especially in the Pac-12 where, you know, you leave on a Wednesday or Tuesday and, you know, you're gone for three or four days. So while we're together having another player who's uh, a quality player. It not only helps Stone for the future, but it really helps this year's team. So uh, we're excited about being able to add him to what we do. And he's a very skilled player. He can shoot the ball. Um, just, you know, initially here, and uh, I think he'll establish that right away that, you know, he doesn't take a back seat to really anybody on our team when it comes to uh, shooting. And uh, he has a skill level. He also loves the game. It's fun to coach guys that love the game because uh, they're always working and they're always trying to get better. And I think Stone's that type of kid and type of player. Do you feel he's not great being able to play center at all, or do you see him more just as a four? You know, he's a versatile forward. I think you can move him around. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of it will depend. We're not there yet, but who, who he's on the court with. So has he been watching practice at least since, since you came back? Or when did he actually get here on campus? And he got here a few days ago. He's able to watch practice but not participate. And then this week, I mean, is it when you talk about where you put him, could he even help you on the scout team to do some Colorado stuff or whatever? I mean, is that can, mm -hmm. can he help you right away like that at least? Mm -hmm. What have you seen from him from, from so far, Colorado and Utah? You know, I haven't watched Utah, uh, but, you know, watched Colorado quite a bit. You know, they, they number one, uh, have a, a team of great depth where they don't depend on just their starting five. Uh, you know, they substitute a lot, get contributions from a lot of guys that don't start the game, that play nine players, ten players. Um, McKinley Wright obviously is uh, a very, very good player, and he's unique. You know, one thing we learned a year ago is, you know, he's a very good offensive rebounder. You don't say that a lot about a point guard, but he can really hurt you by getting second shots. Um, we respect Colorado's rebounding a great deal. I think that's one of the strengths of their team. Uh, Tyler Bay is also an excellent player. He was very good last year as a freshman. He's he's added to what what he did a year ago. He's he's better, and uh, I think he's going to be one of the best forwards in the in the Pac-12. And uh, you know they have a number of different guys that that contribute balanced scoring and. I think the pace of play for Colorado this year is up. So um, I think they, they thrive in transition. 
and really seem to be playing at a faster tempo than maybe they have in the last year or so. You've always talked about players that make the jump from freshman year to sophomore year. When you watch McKinley Wright, what do you notice about him? Well, it's uh, he was so good as a freshman, you know. And he's, he just be, he's a better version of, of himself, you know. I think he the things that he did well a year ago, he's just that much better at. You know, he makes his teammates better. Uh, he's got great vision. His size as a guard really allows him to see the floor. And uh, a year ago, you know, we did a, a poor job of just trying to take away his vision and being tough on the ball. And you know, when you have uh, for example, two people on the ball playing ball screen defense, you know, not allowing him to see the roller, not allowing him to just take a look at the opposite corner. And he can find people because he's strong, he's big, he can see over, and then he's just a cl very clever passer. So, you know, when you look at him getting 10 assists in a game, I mean, you get 10 assists in a game, that's a big, big day. And he's capable of being a, a player that can have that type of number. So. Our ability to not just block him out, keep him off the glass, make sure he doesn't have a big scoring night, that's only part of it. The other part is to not allow him to survey the court as best we can, not allow him to get in the lane and find uh, his teammates. Because when he does that, he really uh, makes his teammates better. And that's when Colorado's at their best. Based on how you guys are shooting that, is it kind of what you see? Is that a trend you see continuing? Yeah, you know, I mean, there's two parts to it. We're working very, very hard to become a better shooting team. I think we have some guys that maybe haven't shot the percentage they're capable of shooting. When you look at our non-conference numbers, uh, you know, they're they're at times alarming just because the percentages aren't great. Um, some of it is is us in that we have to execute better and. Uh, no matter who you are, the better quality three-point shot you take, the higher probability that it's going to go in. And to be able to create more good three-point opportunities is something that we're uh, trying to get better at. And uh, from an individual player perspective, taking a bad three, it's, it's like a turnover. Uh, your percentages are poor. Uh, the ball's going to a lot of times ricochet off the rim. And sometimes it's almost like a turnover in that it's a bad miss, which then triggers a transition opportunity by the other team. And uh, it's just not, it's nothing that's going to help us win, even when once in a while those, those shots go in. So trying to take better three-point shots, uh, trying to work on creating more of those, and then, you know, really working tirelessly shooting the ball. I don't know if we've ever shot more in our practices, outside of our practices, than we have this year. So, um, that's that. Brandon Williams has to do to kind of get going. You know, Brandon has played uh, some excellent basketball for us. I know um, his numbers shooting the ball uh, aren't great right now, but in some of that is when you're a high school senior and you go to college and you have a big role like he does, and you start. Um, it reminds me of kind of when we first came to Arizona. Some of our young players, I mean, they really had to play well for us to win. Um, as time moves on, what you hope is that somebody like Brandon can come in and contribute, and it doesn't just fall on his shoulders that he has to play well for us to win. So uh, he, because he's learning and he's really talented, uh, thing that we love about him is his assist to turnover ratio. When you have 50 assists and 20 turnovers, that's excellent. And uh, I think he could have even more turnovers. You know, we've we've missed some opportunities. I'm sorry, he could e have even more assists. Uh, and we've missed some of the open shots that he's created. But he's done a really good job there. You know, even rebounding, he's averaging three rebounds a game, um, doing a, a good job. At the foul line, uh, I think for him, it's just uh, more games he plays, the more practices that we have, the better he gets. And I believe that his shooting percentage will rise. But it's really unfair to judge him through the non-conference season because we're asking him to do a lot. He plays the one, he plays the two. We're asking him to play harder than he ever has defensively. Uh, we're asking him to make shots. We're, you know, a lot rests on his shoulders. And the good news for him is he's going to continue to grow and develop because he has such a great opportunity. And uh, hopefully, as we keep looking at his shooting percentages, they'll uh, 
they'll go in a positive direction because I have no doubt he's a better shooter than he's shown so far. Is he and Ryan pretty much 100% at this point, you think, with all with the time off? Um, I was wondering, when you look at the Pac-12 being the, the way it's been, do um, you figure maybe the, the schedule could influence how, how the race plays out this year? And, and particularly with you guys, what do you think about not going to Washington and not getting USC at uh, UCLA here? I mean, you just have to play the schedule that 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 is uh, provided. Um, you know, we've we've done it just like all all teams in this conference. Sometimes you have two away that you wish you might be playing. Sometimes you have two at home that you're not that you wish you were playing. But it, we all play 18 games, and that's the schedule. And uh, we have to play uh, nine at home, nine on the road, and be at our very best in all 18. So I, I don't think we get caught up in who we're playing or who we're not playing. Um, that's more for, you know, I think people on the outside to speculate. We have to just be the most ready that we can be. Do you think it could stay this way? I mean, there was some talk last spring, right, that you guys might it might get tweaked a little bit, or what's your what's the latest kind of thought on that and the schedule? Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not aware of 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 anything beyond what we what we're doing right now. Kind of off top off topic, but what do you think of the way the women's team has been kind of playing in the, their win over ASU? Fantastic! I know they had a big win over ASU here over the break in uh, Adia. She's done a great job uh, recruiting, a great job uh, kind of building the enthusiasm around her program. It's fun to watch, and uh, eleven and one, it's a great start. So we wish them continued success. You know, you reaction to UCLA changing coaches. You don't often see that in the middle of the season in college basketball. You know, it's unfortunate. Uh, Steve Alford has been great to me, uh, especially over the last year when he didn't have to. And I respect him uh, a ton. You know, he's a, a, a man of great faith, uh, cares a lot about his family. And I'm sure the next chapter of his life will be a great chapter. Um, so we, you know, my, my thoughts are really more with him and his family moving forward than, than, than UCLA. Uh, so um, I wish him uh, wish him nothing but the best, and uh, I'm sure that uh, in his own way, he's excited about a new chapter and a new start. What are the challenges of coaching at a program like UCLA? I mean, there's a lot of challenges in college basketball, college athletics right now. There's a lot of pressure to win, um, high expectations. You know, I, I go through the nine years nine and a half now years that I've been at Arizona. If you chronicle the football coaching changes, I mean, I think there's more than 30 some. Um, and basketball, um, although not as many, but 20 some. So, you know, during a, a decade, a 10 year period, that's a lot of change. It's, it's hard.